Hey girl, welcome to the Feminine Founder Podcast, where we are all about learning and growing professionally so that we can build a life that we are proud of and really love. My name is Caroline and I'm a LinkedIn expert obsessed with teaching female entrepreneurs how to start, grow, and scale their personal brand and business on LinkedIn. This podcast is all about sharing our stories and learning from each other on how to navigate our professional journey so that we can live our best lives. So if you are just starting your entrepreneurial journey or you're growing and scaling an epic company, you're in the right place, friend. Today, I have my friend and human design expert, Lauren Armstrong, with me. I first met Lauren back in March of this year in the podcast Mastermind, where she came in and spoke to our group, and we learned how to implement our human design into our businesses. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. This is going to be fun. So you and I met a couple months ago at Keisha's Mastermind, and before meeting you, two things. I had no idea what human design was, so I want you to get into it and unpack all the things. Amazing. And number two, then after that, when we had lunch a month ago in California, I learned that you had a corporate career before being an entrepreneur and having a human design business. Yes. 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 We both have those things. <laughs> so tell me all the things. Like, where did you start in corporate? And then how did you get to entrepreneurship and human design? Yes. Okay. So I loved learning all the things about you at, at lunch as well, by the way. I'm like, okay, tell me the whole story. How did you get where you are? Like the corporate recruiting. Oh my gosh. So um, I was in my my past life. I say past life because it doesn't even feel like I'm the same human that experienced corporate. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs feel that way as well. It's like, oh wait, who was that girl? I don't know her. But I worked for an oil company straight out of college and had like 401k and a pension and like all of these crazy like old money things that like no one offers really anymore. Meaning like a pension, right? People still have 401ks, but it was just like a wild kind of ride. But I was feeling like every single day I was having to like saw off parts of myself and leave them in my car before I swiped into work. Um, And I don't know if you're listening, if you can relate to that, right? Like the business casual wear and like not being able to really say what you think or feel about things in order to like fit in with quote unquote, the culture, definitely an old boys club. So went there right after school and kind of was a chipmunk and like saved up a whole bunch of money um, because I knew that eventually I wanted to do my own thing. Both my parents were entrepreneurs growing up. And so I like, quote unquote, rebelled by going the opposite direction and going into corporate America. And I was like, someday I'm going to leave this and I'm going to have the money to do that when I, when I decide the time is right. So fast forward, um, and like building my business on the side, finally decide like, okay, it is time to leave. And I'm doing my business like the quote unquote, like right way, right? Like that everyone tells you to do like the launching way. Um, and I'm not really seeing a ton of success from it. And I'm very confused, like why this quote unquote isn't working. Um, And then I discovered human design and it was like literally a scrolling on Instagram thing. This was like 2017, 2018. And I read a quote about what a projector was, which is one of the five human design types. And I didn't even know what the word projector meant. I didn't know what human design was, but I was like, I don't know what this is, but that's me. Like you just described my life in this one Instagram post. And then I went down the rabbit hole, found out what human design was, pulled my chart, found out I was that type that was a projector, like, and so started aligning my business to this system of human design, which is like totally woo. And I was very like in the closet about my woo-ness, like, and anything spiritual because I had to be that way at corporate. So I like kind of took that with me into entrepreneurship. And then I was being asked by like friends in the industry, like something's different. Like you're it's working for you now and it wasn't before and like your content changed, but like you're not doing explicitly anything different. Like what are you doing? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I found this thing and it's called human design. And then I like couldn't shut up about it, but it was very like behind closed doors. And so then they're like, okay, well, can you like, what's mine? And so then I just got really excited about like pulling other people's charts and telling them informally about the stuff that I had learned. And then I was like, well, I could just go to human design school and like really learn this stuff, right? (laughs) So that's kind of the evolution of how it all unfolded. And then, you know, totally obsessed with human design. think it's like life changing and love helping people. Like, so what human design does is like helps you 
live life the way you're designed to live life. It's like basically your map, your dance steps, like your operating manual of like what's going to quote unquote work for you with more ease and less resistance. And it's a game changer. Okay. No, I'm a huge believer after, and I had no clue about any of it before even meeting you, which is I'm into the woo stuff and I didn't even know about it. So you just completely enlightened me and all the things at the mastermind. And so for those listeners who don't know about human design or are curious now, what are the five human design types? Yes. So human design is a combination of ancient systems and modern science. So you have like the Chinese I Ching in there. You have the Kabbalah tree of life in there. You have the chakra system. You have um, a whole bunch of different elements that are all com- like a combination together to give you like your unique energetic blueprint or how you're designed to move through the world. And based on that map or energetic blueprint at the very highest type or the, the highest level, if you roll all that information up together, there's five types. And so we'll t- technically four aura types, but five types. So we've got the generators and the manifesting generators. And these are our like people who are here to do work they love to do. Like you are here to light yourself up, do work you really enjoy, to be deeply satisfied in the world. And when you're in alignment, which alignment is such a freaking buzzword, but like alignment has a theme for each of the different types. So for generators and manifesting generators, that alignment theme is going to be satisfaction. Like when you, life is working for you, you are deeply satisfied. You wake up with a full tank of gas in the morning, use it in satisfying ways throughout the day and go to bed delightfully exhausted. Like that is alignment for a generator manigen. Is that landing for you? Yes. Cause I'm a generator. Yes. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm not going to call you out if you're not willing to say what you are on the podcast. So like, I'll let you share. No, I'm willing to just rip the mandate off. I'm a generator. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So yeah, satisfaction. Like that's your alignment theme. That's how you know when things are quote unquote working, like moving through life in alignment looks like satisfaction. So when you're out of alignment as a generator or mani gen, you're going to look like really frustrated. Like frustration and satisfaction are your signposts that either something's up and you get to shift something when you're frustrated or things are really working for you. You're following your type strategy and authority and you're deeply satisfied when you're in alignment. Yeah. Yes Plan. to this. I'm like watching you nod. I'm like, uh-huh. We've got that sacral response going on. Okay. Um, so then we have um, we have our manifestors. So manifestors are about 9% of the population. And for them, what their alignment themes are is when they're really in alignment, they're going to feel deep sense of peace. Like just even like feeling the energetic frequencies of these words. Like satisfaction is very different than peace, right? Like satisfaction is like it feels good to have done. Peace, it feels a little bit more spaciousness. Like notice where you feel these different words in your body. Um, And when you're out of alignment as a manifester, you're going to feel really deeply angry. So the manifestors are here to inform. They're here to get things started. They're really our initiators. They're here to start the process. They're not necessarily here to complete, finish, follow through. Um, They're the initiators, which I think is really powerful and massive when you know that about yourself and you're a manifester. So you don't spend your whole life kicking your own butt for not being a quote unquote finisher, not completing tasks. Like what if you're not designed to, what if you can get help? Right. Really powerful there. What's the percentage of generators in the world? So generators and managers is the combo percentage is about 70%. So it's like 35, 35 ish, like not exactly, but it's, the, the generators and many gens are actually like one aura type. You guys have an open and enveloping aura, which is like very magnetizing. So. I love that you. And you're also the life force energy on the planet. So like without you, everything would die. So sometimes that generators and managers are like, but I want to be special. Like I want to be the one percent. I'm like, yeah, but like we'd all die if you were the one person. So we really need you to be like lit up, satisfied, and a majority of the population. Please, thank you so much. So that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. So we got the generators, the manifestors. The manifesting generators. And now we've got, so the fourth would be the projectors. So projectors are about 20, 21% of the population. And we are here to, I say we, because I'm a projector, be the leaders and guides. Um, We are here to wait for the invitation. So we kind of see things from a different bird's eye view. We're not necessarily the doers, but the leaders, right? So we're not like the ones running the race, but we're the ones above who can kind of see, hey, go this way, go that way, right? Like we can see things from a unique perspective. We ask really great questions. Um, but our alignment themes are success, 
So when we feel deeply successful, we know we're in alignment as projectors. And when we're out of alignment, we feel really bitter. So the words that I love to use for modern day bitter are annoyed and resentful. Like it usually shows up when you tell someone what to do and they're not doing it. And they're like, well, I freaking told you what to do two weeks ago and you're still not doing it. Of course, you're not having success or whatever. Like that's very like bitter energy. And so for projectors, it's really important that you wait for people to recognize and invite you before you give them advice or else you're like basically throwing pearls before swine. No one's taking your advice and you're going to be really bitter. It's a waste of energy. Let's take a quick break. Did you know that I'm hosting a free webinar on September 10th on how to start, grow, and scale your business and personal brand on LinkedIn? If you are curious about growing your business or your personal brand on LinkedIn, this is for you. LinkedIn is no longer a place for job seekers and companies hiring. It's a full-blown professional networking site. If you have a service-based business, your clients are most definitely hanging out on LinkedIn. Or if you have a product-based business, your customers are also on LinkedIn. So come join me Tuesday, September 10th at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. This will be a free 30-minute webinar on Zoom, and I can't wait to see you there. Have questions? Send me a DM. Link to register on my website and click the webinar tab. So how do you use human design to operate? For those people listening right now who are entrepreneurs or even if you work in corporate, How can you use human design to operate your business and to market your business or even market yourself? Yeah. Okay. Well, one more type. There's the reflectors, but they're 1%. Their alignment theme is surprise and delight. And when they're out of alignment, they're going to feel really disappointed. So just want to make sure to like close that loop for anyone listening. Yes. I forgot the fourth one. I just went ahead and skipped over the fourth one. Like, wait, no, close. And then we'll open a new loop. Um, Yeah. So how do we use it in business? So There's so many different elements. This is like what I do. This is my jam. So I went to the International Human Design School for the Business Consultancy Program Um, and like how to actually use it, how to leverage it, because we are often like told that we have to do things a certain way, which in human design, we call it the science of differentiation. We are designed to do things differently, whereas what the world wants and is like kind of conditioning us to do is called what we call homogenization. It wants everybody to be the same. It wants all to do things the same way. And it's like, it doesn't work for everyone. And so really getting clear on like what's going to work for me and my unique configuration is very different than what's going to work for you and your unique configuration. So even when we look at it from like a marketing perspective, some of the areas that I love to look at for mar- marketing are our profile lines, which are separate from type. So there are 12 different profile um configurations, if you will. And so we can look at your profile numbers to be like, what's your personality? How do you show up in the world? What are people going to kind of expect from you? And what feels really natural for you to, in order to share information in a specific way? So for example, I'm a 5-1 in my profile. So my profile, I'm designed to market in a way that's very, here's the answer. Here's the message. Here's implementable, actionable advice based off of my research and knowledge. And that's the way that I share versus somebody who's maybe a 6'2 is going to be more of the embodied role model leader and teacher who's going to be sharing based off of like what comes naturally to them and the wisdom they've gained along the way. And then they're going to be act more like a teacher versus like a problem solution guide. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I'm glad you brought the numbers too, because I forgot that layer of it. <laughs> There's so I much stuck up there trying to still learn how to embody generator title. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so fun because then there's two, like when you look at the body graph, there's all these shapes that you can look at, right? And all those shapes in the body graphs, if you pull up your human design, if, you, if you've never pulled your chart before, you can go to laurenarmstrong.com slash human design chart. I have a free chart software. But if you look at the shapes there, each of the shapes represent functions. And so what functions are you bringing to the table versus what functions my other customers be kept like bringing to the table and then how do you interact with people based off of the different functions like it's just so fun to look at all these different elements and like you can go so detailed on this and also you can go all the way up to the type right which is like okay as a generator you don't want to be marketing doing things that make you feel freaking frustrated like if you're being told to dm people on instagram all day, every day. And you're like, "Mm, everything about that says no in my body and makes me feel really frustrated. That strategy is probably not going to work for you. Right? Like, so you can look at literally the highest level of that and then also go really deeper. 
Yeah, I'm not into the DMs on Instagram. I do them, but I'm into the DMs on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, I know that's just part of your strategy on LinkedIn. But that's like satisfying for you, yeah? 100%. And even just changing different strategies on there to see what's working to get more connection with people, not just sign up for my newsletter or join my course or let's work together. It's more of just even creating real human connection on there. Yeah. And I think it's really fun too, like looking at like, cause you're a generator. So you're designed to respond to life. So you're literally like on LinkedIn and you could like be scrolling and seeing something that, Ooh, I want to respond to that person. Or I really have something to say about this specific topic that I'm seeing on there. Like that's amazing. Like that's really in alignment with the way your energy works. So you get to use it. In that way. One thing for me that I learned, it was a huge takeaway when you did your presentation and spoke to us in the mastermind was so to get even more specific, I'm a sacral generator, which means I make decisions with my gut. And I left really taking that to heart and started implementing that in my business. And if you watch me online, things have been exploding over the past six months, honestly, because I took that exact thing that I learned from you and actually started implementing it in my business. And so what that meant was I started saying no to a lot more things. Mm. And it's hard because you have society or people or friends or business people that you do that you deal with that expect you, they want your time, they want to meet with you. And while that's great and everything, but I have I can't just meet with everybody and do coffee chats mm-hmm. with everyone. Like that's just an example of really taking what you're teaching and implementing my business. And it's really been a game changer. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I love it. Cause like learning about your design is actually not powerful at all. If you're not implementing it, like it's like just another cool, like party trick, you know, about yourself versus like, Oh, actually being sacral or sacral generator, you know, that uh uh uh-huh is the way your body responds to things. So like, even though you think you should go to coffee with this person, because like, you're really nice and like, they're really nice and like, whatever it's like, okay, but your body said no. So it's a no. Like that's actually not the best use of your time. You're going to run yourself into the ground if you say yes to all of these things because your your authority, your body's decision-making strategy, your intuition speaks to you in a very specific way. And so you're saying only yes to the things your body says, yes, this is for me. I have the energy and attention for it. And it's correct. Like if you say yes to things that are not correct, you're spending your life doing incorrect things. You're so distracted. Yeah, and for me too, I went out before I met you. <laughs> Before you changed my life, but no, really, um, when I, before, when I was saying yes to a lot more things, every single time I would leave frustrated and I would come home to my husband and he would say, how was X, Y, Z, whether it was an online thing I was doing or in person thing. And I was just like, oh, don't even ask me about it anymore. Once I started saying no to those things and saying yes to the hell yes is only my reaction and how I felt satisfied and how I move forward and went to bed that night (laughs) was a much happier person. Oh my gosh. I love this. Like that's the whole, it's like, it's so easy, right? It's like our minds are almost like, wait, no, that's too easy. That can't be the answer. Like to having a satisfied life. It's like only saying yes to things that are yes, but like literally it's that simple. And it's something I implemented. I mean, you do it with your family relationships, your friend relationships, your partner relationships, your business relationships, whatever relationship it is, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. Like I've kind of implemented this thing with people in my circles where if it's a no, I know I don't need an explanation. Like your body said, no, that's good enough for me. Like you don't need to tell me like, oh, I want to, but like I can't because my kids are sick or like whatever. Like I don't care. Like I don't need a reason. I'm not going to, my my feelings are not going to be hurt. If it's not correct for you, it's not correct for anyone. Like no explanation needed. Like your body said, no. Cool. So this leads me into a a question I had written down is, okay, so you're listening to this podcast and you're curious about human design and we're, we're getting into implementing it in relationships. Yeah. How can you make sure you stay true to that? I mean, I think it like for me, I'm fresh off like meeting you and being around you and learning about human design. And so I'm what a couple months, six months out. Yeah. How do I stay true to sticking with the human design and, and knowing what I'm I'm doing the right thing? 
Yeah, I think that that whole like satisfaction versus frustration thing is really the guidepost, right? Because especially once you draw the line in the sand and you're like, I'm not going to say yes to the things that like feel like a no in my body. And then you go to the event that were the no because you think you should. And then you get, you get reminded, like you get an instant reminder, like, shoot, I'm frustrated. Like, damn it. Like I did the thing. My body told me no and I'm frustrated. So it's like, you can not do that, but your the answer, the result is frustration for a generator, right? So like same thing with being a projector. Like I could, I did this last week. I did something that my my body was like, no, don't do it. And I was like, oh, I really like feel like I need to do this. Like I really should do this. I was bitter as hell for like four days. I was I was so mad. Like I was resentful. I was like, but I did it to myself, right? Like I can't freaking blame anyone else. I like went against my body. I went with my mind and the result is bitterness for me. So it's like, I don't know that, that to me is like when you're teaching a child, like how to walk or whatever, they learn like, Oh, I can't touch the stove. The stove's hot. Like you learn that over and over. It's like, they just won't touch the stove. <laughs> So understanding human design, is that something just for entrepreneurs or is that good for corporate American employees or should everyone know it? Oh my gosh. Tell me all like, the things. I'm obsessed. So I feel like every human on earth and dog and mom and whatever, I feel like everyone should know. Um, dogs do have a design, by the way, which I know like pet lovers are like obsessed. I'm like, pull my dog's chart. I'm like, okay. Um, but I, I think it's valuable for every human. And here's why. What it tells us is, is like one of the things, especially I know you come from a corporate background and so do I, especially like corporate recruiting, you can learn your strengths through the lens of human design, which I think is really fun to look at because not only can entrepreneurs use that in order to like create and sell offers based off what they're amazingly brilliant at and it's going to come really naturally to them that people are already going to recognize them for because it's like natural in their energy field. They're just able to bring awareness and words to it. But in the corporate setting, when you realize like, oh, here are my strengths and here are the words I can actually put to it because it's laid out in your design, like here's what your strengths are. And then you can look for and apply those to roles that are really going to be a natural innate fit. And I think especially like in corporate settings, I just have this belief that like we try and fill gaps. I don't know if it's still like this. It's been a minute since I've been in in those environments. But like there's just like a very strong when I was there conversation around like, oh, we want to fill the gap of like what you're not good at and like get better at the areas you're not good at. Whereas I play more in like, why don't you play to your strengths? Like Marcus Buckingham style, like you have strengths, get better at your strengths versus like trying to fill all these gaps. And so if you can get really clear, like actually I've spent my whole life filling quote unquote gaps and yeah, I've gotten like decently good in a lot of these other areas, but my natural innate strengths are so clearly obviously laid out here and you can play to those and apply for roles in those and really speak to those in hiring conversations. Like so powerful. So what point are you at with some of the clients that you're working with right now? Ooh, so many things. Okay. So like yesterday I had a session with someone who came to me and she was like, I don't believe I can make 30 K months like these, like, you know, like nobody's going to pay me for things like this. And so what I love to look at within the chart is where we have open or undefined centers. We have what we call quote unquote, like not self themes. So There are areas where we've been conditioned to believe certain things that aren't necessarily true. So based on the configuration of the chart, we kind of gotten down to like, okay, well, what do you think about people who receive? And she was like, oh, they're out of integrity. Like that was her first answer. Like people who make a lot of money are out of integrity. I'm like, okay, this has nothing to do with 30 K months, right? Like this has to do with this inherent belief that like, if you are then going to receive that amount, you're not going to allow yourself to, because then that will mean you're out of integrity. And one of your core values is being an integrity, right? So we really get to look at this, like, not just from a, oh, this is how you're wired, but here's how you're wired. Here's the map of your energy. And also here's maybe some sticking points that aren't allowing you to live into the life and the business that you want to be having. Like, I think those are really fun. I'm also working with a lot of new moms who are like, having like babies and they're like, tell me about my kids because I want to be able to raise them as who they are, not who I want them to be. Those are super fun and powerful conversations that I've been having. Um, relationships like couples coaching has been really fun because we can look at the configurations of two different people's charts. We could be like, Here's what you're bringing to the table. Here's what you're bringing to the table. You can literally see a couple's most common argument like in their chart configuration. It's like so obvious. <laughs> like, Does it involve a boat? Because our biggest argument is a boat. 
okay, love this. Tell me more. Like, what about the boat? No, but seriously, <laughs> it's been more like my my husband. It's funny. I'm going way off topic right now, but my husband was like, I he was loading the boat one time, and he was like, "Are you the captain of the Seven Seas?" Love it. So maybe like, so we'll get like, maybe like control versus non-control, like who has the control dynamic in the relationship, right? So the way that it's that showing up is through the boat, but it could also show up in a lot of different ways. And so we get to look at like who in the relationship has that control energy. So yeah, so, so fun. It's a good one. Okay. So as we wrap up, how can our listeners find you? Um, So you can find me on Instagram at, at Lauren E. Armstrong underscore. Um, I'm sure you'll have it in the show notes and all the things I am trying with link with LinkedIn, Caroline. I am trying. I'm getting rid of all of my old people. Caroline told me this, mo- the most impactful info. Can I share your tidbit? Yeah, from- sure. Go. Okay. So I'm like an anti LinkedIn girly, like not going to lie. Then I- but be the reason for it is Until because you met me. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm coming out of that belief. I'm moving through it. It's still not exactly the place that I want to be, but this is why, because it's filled with all my corporate people. Like it's still filled with all my connections from the oil and gas industry. And like, that's just like not who I am. And so that place, that space is not reflective of who I am now or who I want to be or who I want to be working with. So Caroline's like, um, just unmatch with people. And I don't know why that was like the biggest, (laughs) what I can unmatch. (laughs) Like, shocking thing to me that oh I can actually curate that place to not just be like a graveyard of my corporate career but actually be a cultivated garden if we want to go with that same analogy of like humans that I want to work with in the future so thank you for that nugget that I can just unmatch with people and I'm working on it there are a lot of a lot of people to move through so thank you so I I will be on LinkedIn at some point but like right now it's Slow moving. So if you don't get a response there, it'll be a minute. Um, oh, and then, and Lauren. Instagram. Yeah. And then uh, my website is just laurenarmstrong.com. So you can find me there as well if you're not on the gram. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. It's that time of year again. Summertime is in full swing. I don't know if you're if you're like me, but your girl hates drinking a warm beverage. That's why I created Childvino. Childvino is my patented drinkware product designed with innovative cooling technology to keep your wine or cocktail cold. With a long stem and elegant feel, you can enjoy your wine or cocktails outdoors. Childvino is shatterproof and resembles a wine glass made of BPA-free plastic. You place in the freezer four hours prior to using and remove, and voila, it'll keep your wine cold for hours. You can find at www.chilvino.com or on Amazon.